everyone welcome back to Rina's youtube channel in this video we will be seeing the part 3 of the html series i hope you have enjoyed the previous two episodes in this episode we will be discussing more on css what is css you may ask well css is a style sheet that is used that is used to add design and beauty to a web page in this in this episode we will be adding css to our existing web page in order to add CSS in this web page, we will have to open the style tag. After opening the style tag in the head section, we are now ready to go in uh, to insert the beauty inside our web page. The first step we will be doing is we will be removing this image and putting it on the top. We will also be removing this panda image for now. After that, we are going to add something called a div. A div is basically a mini container. A div tag is added in this way. Inside this div tag, let us put our rabbit image. After adding the rabbit image, the next thing we need to do is that we need to add a text over this image. But we cannot add text over this image without using CSS. So therefore, we will be using CSS to do this. But before that, let us create the uh, text we actually want to add. In this case, I'll be using something called as a span tag. A span tag is very much similar to a paragraph tag, except in this, you wouldn't be leaving lines between two paragraphs. After adding the span tag, I will be adding the title called animal biography. But before this, I will add another mini container inside this container. This container is also another div. After putting both of them in two different containers, I will be adding this. I will be adding another subtitle to this. Here I will be writing rabbits. After this, I will use two br tags to give sufficient space in between. But after this, I would like to give a button that will take them to a page which will make them know more about rabbits. Therefore, I will be using a ref. And a button. This button tag is used to create buttons. After this, I will write the content read more. Let us see how it looks without CSS. As you can see, it looks very ugly. But if we add CSS now, it will look extremely beautiful. So the first thing we are going to do is that we are going to create a, a class a CSS for this main. In order to insert a CSS, uh, you have to give it a name for the class. In this case, I will be naming it container. After this, I will go here and create dot container. Remember that the dot is extremely important if you are creating a style just for a particular class. After doing this, you need to write some CSS. Here, the first CSS we will be writing is position. What position basically does is that it allows the, the uh, objects to overlap with each other. Here, we will be using the position called a relator. After using that, we will be adding text align. After text align, we will be using center. Then color will always be any color you want. In this case, I will use white. After this is done, we will be using the uh, next div. In this, we have this particular div, which we will be naming as center. After copying this, you can create another class for this and you can name it dot center. After doing this, what you can do is that you can add more CSS to it. We will start with position again and make it absolute this time. Absolute and position are very much similar, except absolute allows more objects to overlap over each other. The next thing is that we will be defining the position. In order to define the position, we will be using the CSS property known as top. In this, I want to align it exactly over the center. 
Therefore, I will be using 50%, which will take it to the 50% over the screen. After this, I will also assign the left, which will make it exactly to the center, which means top 50% and from the left 50%. After doing this, the next thing we will do is that we are going to uh, position this exactly. Now, if we execute this only top and left, then the text will come over here. But if we use the transform property, it will align exactly over the center. The transform property has many values, which are extremely complex. But in this case, we will be using translate, which moves only two dimensional objects over the web page. Here, I will be giving some values. Uh, values. If you don't understand this step, don't worry because this CSS is very advanced level. We are only using this because we need to make the web page look more beautiful. The next step we are going to do is that we are going to assign a class for the span tag. Let us make this as main title. In order for the main title, we will be using font size 35 px. Also note that px stands for pixels. We will be using something called font family, which defines what kind of font we should use in our web page. I will go with Arial Helvetica Sans Serif because it's very good font family. Since our main title is done, we will add a new class for the subtitle. This will be named as subtitle. After adding subtitle, we will be adding the font family again. After this, we will add the font size. The font size here will be 28 pixels. After doing this, we will be adding the color of the font. The color here I choose will be light blue. You can choose any color you want. After all this, let us see how our website currently looks. As you can see now, it looks very nice. But since the button is very ugly, we will now see how to add CSS for the button. In order to add CSS for the button, we will have to assign a class to the button. But I will be assigning a class to this called as button underscore or button Boom. What I will be doing in this class is that we will be adding a lot of styles to this. The first style will be border color. I will use a random hex code here. The hex code I will be using is 2196F3. You may be wondering what a hex code is. A hex code is basically a six digit code that is mainly used for representing colors. You can also hover over it in Visual Studio Code to get this panel and you can choose a variety of colors from this. The next thing we will be adding is the color. Here I will be using a color called Dodger Blue. After this, I will add border. Two pixels or border none because I don't want any border over this because borders on buttons don't usually look good. After this, I will add something called as padding. Padding is basically like a margin for these things. It leaves space between all the sides. Here I will be using 14 pixels and 28 pixels. So what this basically does is that for the uh, top left side, we will be uh, using 14 pixels and the other side will be using 28 pixels. If you define for all four sides, there will be different paddings for all the sides. Here, uh, top and the bottom will have 28 pixels and the left and right will have 14 pixels. After that, I will be inserting the font size. The font size here will be 16 pixels. After that, I will also use cursor. With, with what this basically does is that when I hover over it, a particular cursor will appear. Here, I will be using pointer. After that, I will also use border radius. What this basically does is that it provides a curve over the button's edges. You can experiment with this as, uh, as much as you want. After this, 
the code is done. Now let us refresh to see how the button looks. The button looks really good. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. In the next episode, we will be adding iframes videos and uh, uh, iframes videos and uh, images. I hope you like this. I'll see you in the next video.